みんな、こんにちは。元気ですか私は、セブクスガーディアンです。If you happen to be having a good day, then I'm here to hopefully cheer it up even more. And if you're having a bad day, then I shall assist you with forgetting about it for a couple of minutes. So, really quickly, I need to go over what an audio roleplay channel is. And don't worry, for those of you who are watching from my previous one, I'll make it fresh and interesting. <laughs> an audio roleplay channel is simply a channel <laughs> that puts out audio roleplays. That's about the simplest way I can explain it. However, it's a little more complicated than that. What it actually entails, usually, is a YouTuber sitting by themselves in a room and recording themselves, talking to themselves, and pretending that they're having a conversation with the listener who is going to be listening at a later date once they upload that video. Where am I going with this? Well, sometimes they can pretend to be an assassin coming after you in the dead of night, and then they see you. And then they fall in love, and they're like, no, I can't kill you. Or they could pretend to be,、mm, let's see, what else?、Uh, gosh dang it, I had, something, I had something planned, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> anyway, you probably、um, get the gist of it.、Um, there is also. Uh, where they can, they, also, they can also pretend that the listener is a specific gender and they themselves will portray themselves to be their gender. And then sometimes you might have this sort of tag on the video where it's like F for M or F for A, or sometimes. You can get collaborations with、um, other YouTubers, in which case they would have two letters before the number. And it might be something like MM for F or FF for F. And sometimes people just don't use the, the letter at all, they just put the F. And sometimes people don't put a tag at all, in which case you would actually have to go listen. To the video to find out is the listener supposed to be a female or a male, or do they just use the they pronouns? Which is it? It's actually a little annoying when YouTubers do that, but at that point, they're usually putting out for a specific audience. You wouldn't know until you get there and you listen. um Most of these. Are supposed to be ASMR, but、um, I think that like half of them don't even know what ASMR is. All they know is just that, like, they don't, just don't be loud or something.、Uh, well, I'll give you a little backstory. I watch ASMR to fall asleep, or at least get sleepy. And that usually includes for me visual triggers, like when、um, the The YouTuber like,、um, uh, measures the camera or does the makeup on the camera or stuff like that. That's ASMR for me. So when I hear people talking in a normal voice, and they, there's like no background ambience and whatnot, and yet they're calling it ASMR. Or the worst thing, when they shout and then they call the video ASMR, excuse me, like, They don't realize that when you put something as ASMR, people might decide to watch and listen to it to go to sleep. If you're shouting in the middle of the night while they're trying to sleep, what does that say about you as a YouTuber? Okay, okay, I'm, I'm glad we got that out of the way. <sighs> the, two youtubers, the two YouTubers that I want to talk about in this video. Are Hank Miller and Weeb Trash Audio Roleplays?、Um, I mentioned in my last
uh, review video that Hank Miller is actually up there in my top three. I, I, I had to put, I had to make a top three just so I could put him in there. And um, well, now you will be able to find out just um, why I rank him so highly. It's, um, let's see, how many points do I have for this? I think I have like three points. Uh, number one is the SFX. Number two is, I guess, the stories that he does. And, um, number three is just how immersive everything is, but then again, no YouTuber has actually catered to my own personality, so it, it doesn't, I don't really find myself, like, sinking too much into pretending to be who the, uh, the YouTuber says I am, you know, like, outgoing personality, and, um, you're so good at books, and, um, well, I mean, I'm good at drawing, but people don't really talk about that, that sort of thing too often, because, uh, from, from what I've seen, a lot of, uh, people who comment that they're like, I can't draw a stick figure to save my life. I don't know, I don't know how many artists there are randomly listening to, um, audio role plays to begin with. But, I mean, I'm over here, and I'm not represented enough. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, so... The thing about Hank Miller, there's actually two things about Hank Miller. One, he always puts out for a female audience, and number two, his work descends into not safe for work nearly all the time. I think there's a, a safe for work series that he did called Cinderella. I'm not particularly interested. Um, the thing, again, the thing about Hank is that, um, uh, the characters that he plays seems, uh, they, they, they seem to be a little, uh, they don't think with the heads on their shoulders, basically. I mean, it's not like that most of the time, but it definitely gets to that, uh, si that situation down in the ending. So, what I understand that he does is that he does an entire improv session and then like cuts off the not safer work part and then posts posts the safer work part on um, on YouTube as a teaser. Another thing about Hank is that most, if not all, of his um, his audios are completely free on on his on his subreddit. So, Grant, if you happen to want to listen to those, you don't have to pay for them, like some YouTubers do. I mean, yeah, I get that they need money and whatnot, and they have their Patreon, but I mean, it's still, it's kind of annoying when something is locked behind a paywall. I mean... I will never be able to purchase anything online or use anything online because even if I would, I wouldn't because I'm kind of paranoid about things getting hacked and such. I don't have any banking information online to begin with. So let's talk about Hank, right? Ugh, I, my brain is going a little, a little squishy. Um, uh, the types of scenarios that he does, for the most part, are fairly realistic, where he just, like, pretends to be the listener's friend, or co-worker, or maybe, like, uh, a car repairman in one. He doesn't seem to do the whole, um, pretends he's a, um, <clears throat> a fantasy creature shtick. It's all just all fairly realistic stuff that he does. <clears throat> and, um, again, 
all it it feels like no let, let me rephrase that all of his work is of a higher adult quality than the most of the ASMR I mean the quoted ASMR on your role play channels out there um probably because he has it delve into him pegging the listener later on so things gradually descend in that direction hey I'm an adult okay I can listen to Nazi for work stuff if I want to um so one of the thing no the thing that I like most about Hank that actually kind of he, he well he said like he set like a high a bar for kissing SFX. Um, remember when I said that he w he was very realistic? Yeah, his his uh his kissing uh sounds are so realistic that when I listen to anyone else's, with the exception of of Azuru and Sizaku, it sounds very fake like to the point where I I just can't get behind it no uh, I'm fairly certain that if you take a gander at practically any one of um, Hank's uh, teasers on um, on YouTube near down to the end you will get the kissing noises so when um, when I started listening to Hank it made me realize something about um, some of the other role plays that I've listened to. Um, I mean, obviously, most of them are for like general audience, and they they don't want to go in that direction where it's oh let's let's take off our clothes and and whatnot. Um, but Again, there is. Oh, I'll be sick. One of my cats is at the door. <laughs> there is something that he mentions in one of his videos. Um, he's he talks about what kissing does to um, progress a relationship when it comes to, you know, um, the, the whole uh, situation where they they. They lie down and stuff, you know that that thing. I'm trying. I'm trying not to be too graphic here. Um, whoops. My bad. My my fingers just brushed across the mic there for a sec. Oopsie. Where he says that um, kissing will invoke a reaction in both parties, right? Under the assumption that you have romantic feelings for the person kissing you, or you kissing that person, something along the, something along the lines of that. Panther, would you please? It will do something to your body, right? Um. And uh, it's. It, I just let you in. You wanna go back outside? <laughs> Fine. Oh wait, I was supposed to feed the cats. Oh, shucks. Well, let's continue talking about Hank. It surprises me how much uh, audio uh, role plays would have them like make out or something like in a closet or a locker or something and then they just walk out fine hunky dory nothing's going on in their heads and like I'm not like excuse me you make out with with the with the listener in in a closet for like what five six minutes straight and you're telling me that you're not walking around hard huh I it's it's ridiculous but that is not something that Hank does when once he gets turned on, he gets turned on, and when when the listener sees it, she's like, "Ooh, let me let me, let me grab." And I, 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 you know what I mean. 
Um, so, for the most part, uh, Hank's content is roughly 30 minutes minus. Some of them might be like 16 minutes or so. Um, and they're all, yeah, fairly short. Um, and I guess that's all I'm, I have to say about Hank. Um, he doesn't have scripts, so he does everything improv. And in order to do something improv, you need to have a fairly high level of imagination to just sit there and record everything in one go. Oh, another thing before I forget to mention, the way Hank does his, um, his, I don't know, spatial audio is like... It makes me feel like he set up his camera in the middle of his, like, apartment or his house where he lives alone by himself and the place is quiet and he's just walking around talking and you can hear him opening cupboards and, and clicking, um, clicking glasses in the background and then he, he comes back and, and you, well, you can, you can hear him approaching and stuff. That's pretty cool. Not a lot of, um, you, uh, role plays goes to that um, level for something that short, basically. I mean, I guess half an hour isn't really that short. Oh, anyway. Uh, so, yeah. That is, that, um, that is what makes Hank so high quality because of all of the stuff that he does. Um, I'm going to forego what I was just going to say. I, I don't think it's very appropriate to say it <laughs> about a, a certain item that you can use to make those specific sounds. So let's move on to Weeb Trash Audio. This dude has uh, maybe like three four um, series going on and oh my gosh I'm in love with all of the stories like this this dude is actually real good at what he does so uh, my favorites are Liberated Demon X Listener and and um let's see it's called uh, hmm well, I guess it's called the Space Saga. Um, the Liberated Demon. Oh wait, let me let me re uh, let me reverse a little bit. From what I've seen, he only puts out content for female listeners as well. So there's that. Um, I like content that is geared towards the female anyway. Just so you know, I can feel like. I'm being appreciated for who I am kind of way, but I digress. Let, let's, let's not talk about that too much. So, um, looking at this channel here, I've, I've watched like three of his, um, his series, Ziz. and, uh, well, actually, as far as I can see, those are the only three series that he has. Technically there's this hunting cowboys thing. But anyway, let me talk about the Liberated Demon X listener. It's um how, how should I put this? The listener is some kind of in uh, of a, a fantasy creature. I can't remember what the name of the race is, but I guess she's like kind of like an elf, and she finds a demon shackled, and um, like frees him of all of his pain and suffering, and, and turns him into like almost like a human, but not quite because of his like background and stuff, and then he decides to like follow her and stuff. Um, I am not sure if anyone would be interested in going and listening to that, but I, I, I don't want, again, I don't want to give 
spoilers to that either. And um, and then we have the the space saga, where um, the listener is the commander of some sort of spaceship, and uh, she makes friends with an android who claims that he's catching feelings for her. And then their, their ship gets attacked, and then they get separated. And then, um, basically, the series is them um, looking for each other, something along the lines of that. I'm, I'm just, like I said, it's, it's really, really... Uh, there's another one, it's not um, too much of my favorite, but I, I think I have listened to the entire series where it's uh, a soldier and civilian story where I guess it's like um, post-war where uh, a soldier comes and finds the listener um, looking for her friends somewhere hidden, I believe. It's been a while since I've, I've, uh, what's, what's what refreshed my mind on this particular series. If you happen to go listen to the entirety of the Liberated Demon X listener series, I will give you a very slight warning. One, whoa, on. <laughs> one of those videos is not what it seems. Don't worry, there's there's nothing Nazi for work in it. But it will <laughs> it will make you particularly angry at the ending of that that one video. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, we trash. If you happen to be listening to this. Um, that, I'm fairly certain you, you know which one video I'm talking about, but just in case you don't, it's the one with the thumbnail of uh, the Milky Way. <laughs> that one is actually my favorite. I've saved it to a playlist, and I listen to it, like, a lot. <laughs> it, it's really funny. And, um, as for the range of voice on both of these YouTubers, I, I forgot to mention this, whoops, it's already been 23 minutes, um, Hang Son, he doesn't really try doing anything particularly high or low with his voice, so, um, I guess there's nothing much I can say there. But, I mean, his voice overall is just really good. It's pleasant to listen to. He has a nice, um, deep, kind of medium-ish tone. And as for Weeb Trash, he, well, he, um, I'm, I'm not too sure if he uses, um, like, a, an audio, what do you call this thing again? The one the, the one that makes that changes your voice based on like what you wanted to do but <laughs> I don't know okay from but from what I can hear he has a fairly decent range as well he can make his voice pretty deep and he has a fair library of accents that he can use so there's that both of them have engaging stories and that the fact that they have they gear their um, content towards a female audience is even better and the fantasy of weeb trash's um content is always a good thing because i'm the type of person that likes that stuff so that is pretty much all I can think to say without making this any longer than it needs to be. What on earth? Okay then. Um, I'm I'm staring at Weeb Trash Audio's um 
channel page right now and all of a sudden three notifications popped up i'm gonna go deal with that uh so i will see you all in my next video i'm not sure who i should pair up with the youtuber that i want to talk about which is who is going to be about being voice by the way i have stuff to say about this dude um so get ready for that whenever i happen to get on that so remember if you're a youtuber hydrate often not too often and if you are sick or you're feeling depressed or or you're physically hurt please take a freaking break your content will suffer because of it i don't want people to start giving up on you because you're not putting out the high quality content that i know you can do okay okay glad we reached that understanding sayonara